In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can create a, a um, 2D drawing of a caster. So if we go to the view command, we want to work in the 2D model sheet. And then clicking back on the home tab, we'll get our sketching tools. We shall start with a circle by center. And we'll just place this in the middle of the drawing somewhere. And we can type in the size and hit enter. That will finish that and I'll change that diameter size to 40 and place a second line in the middle. Then we go to the line command and if we um, hover over one of these circles we can pick up off that center point and a point on and the combination of the two is where we're going to start. We can go up, type in 25. Um, as you can see on the cursor there is a, um, a vertical um, relationship showing and that's where we want to place our point. We'll then create a horizontal line and um, we should see that horizontal icon coming up as well and again we can place that. Coming down it should automatically recognize that center point so we can just place our vertical line here and then hovering over this this line here we can pick up off say um, an intersection point, but in this case we want the tangent. Now if we come across to our split command and underneath there you'll find extend to next. This will extend a line out to the next in intersection. So as you can see here it's extending out or here. If I go the other side nothing happens. So I can click on there. Then we need to do a trim. So this cuts back to the next intersection point or endpoint. Same on this one, or alternatively I can just drag that out. So now we go to a fillet, type in our 20 mm radius that we're after, and we can either do it by clicking on the two lines, um, which is especially useful if they're not connected, or we can just come down to the intersection, and that will do the same, um, same thing. So um, this is a bracket, sheet metal, and I want to just show the inside edge here. And I'm going to use the offset command to do that. So we put in a distance of three millimeters. Uh, have the option of single. And if I click on here, right mouse click to accept. And you then specify the direction. So I want to bring this down. And then right mouse click to finish. Now this is an um, internal line. So this needs to be hidden. So if I go back to my select command, select the line. I can actually change that to a dashed line as such. At this stage we want to add some dimensions and constrain the geometry a little bit better than what it is at the moment. Um, just so that I can hide the dimensions later if I wish, um, I can come over to the Layers tab and type in the name of a new layer. And you'll see that the pencil mark indicates that that is the active layer now. Uh, this dimension here um, would have been placed on the default layer. So what I can do is I can change um, that to this dimension layer now. Um, likewise, I would um, have any dimension I place now will be on that um, new layer. One other thing, um, if I go into the Smart Dimension tool, you'll see that the default is for the text on the dimension to be um, parallel to the dimension line. And that's not what we're after, so we're going to add in a new um, style. So if we click on the Styles tab, we're going to use the ISO millimeter tab for dimensions. And I just want to create a new one. And I'm going to call this ISO Rad. And if I click on the Text tab, I can specify that the um, text for this dimension is going to be um, instead of parallel horizontal. So that's created a new dimension style. So I can close this down. Now, if I come and use the dimension tool, uh, smart dimension is a bit like a dimension element. So I can click on here. Um, I may want to make that text size a little bit bigger. So I've just changed the um, sort of scaling value there. So I can just click an element and place it. If I want to change the values, I can do that, and it will adjust the geometry based on the relations that are placed on that geometry. 
So now if I come over and pick up on, on here, you'll see that we're still using that um, 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 dimension style that was originally there. I can come and click on that new one, new one we created and put in my value on there. And we'll put another one in down here. Um, for this one here, um, rather than having a radius, I would like a diameter so I can come up here and either click on the diameter tool or hit the D key and that switches to a diametral value on there. Likewise, if I pick up on this line here, the default is to have it um, dimension the length. I could change to angular dimension. Um, I can do the same by hitting the A key and then just depending on which way you drag your cursor defines how that is placed. So that's all of our dimensions placed. Um, I'm going to go back to my default layer so I can double click on that and then everything else now is going to get created on that default layer. Um, so if we look at this we can right mouse click on the dimensions layer and hide that and you'll see that all those dimension values have, have now disappeared. So um, later on we, it, we may want to decide to dimension it differently on the working drawing so we can turn those off if we want to. So um, as I said we also want to place some extra relationships on so the horizontal vertical relationship will um, straighten up a line or a um, to its nearest vertical or horizontal. We can also use it to work with key points. So I want this endpoint in line with this center point. So that's going to maintain that relationship. Um, likewise, I want to use the equal relationship between this one and this radius here. So that if I adjust the size on here, this one will adjust as well. Now we're ready to draw the plan view. So if we um, zoom out, shift control, um, right mouse click to reposition the other view. And we want to start with a line that is um, out to the left hand side, 25 mil long. And then just place in here. If we come to the tangent command, we can create a tangency between that and that. And you can just about see the dashed line that comes in here. And then we can place our um, two lines in here. So if I hover over here, that will give me my position. Right mouse click, I can start at the bottom. And then to enforce that, I can always use the horizontal vertical. So that can be connected to there. And then that can be connected to there. And that controls everything so that it is connected. Then if we go to our grid options and turn our grid on, um, we want to show the readout, show the grid and enable keyins. And um, if you need to, you can reposition and say put the point there. Then um, if I go back to my line command, um, I want to start at x equals zero and tab across and y equals 10 so it's just 10 mil above uh, this point here and the length of the line needs to be um, 45 long so that will be x0 and y minus 35 and replace that. So that's how the grid works. Um, if you want to, you can snap to it. Um, but now we'll turn this off. And come back to our standard standard view. So again, we need to come across here, pick up off that endpoint, recognize that, and place and close that off. Notice we didn't quite get this square. So um, what we need to do is use the horizontal vertical and just click on there and that will square it up to the nearest vertical, horizontal, etc.
So now we need to create the um, inside edges of, the, of these lines. So again, we can use our offset. And again, we're still using 3mm. And you want to project it down. And click on this one, right mouse click to accept. And project that one up. And then we can come back and change um, these two to a dash line. So I use the control to um, pick both of them and do them both at the same time. So now we need to do the reference to this piece here. So again, if we um, zoom in, um, we can just start drawing a line from the end point. And if we hover over there, we should be able to get that point coming in. So if I start again, let's just go to the end point and then come straight into here and I should be able to pick up that point there. It's not quite getting it, so let's just type in the value 20 mil. Come down to this one and then back to the start. And then we'll need to do the same on the other side. So, so that um, completes our um, two views. Now if we go back to our sheet one, we can actually place them onto um, the main view, um, the main drawing sheet. So if we go to um, in here, um, Under the sketching tab, you have a 2D model view. So if we'll start by selecting um, this view in here. So you click, hold down, drag around the area. So click, let go, and then drag around the area. And then you can place your view on the sheet. And then if we go back and get the second one. And place that over the top somewhere then we can do an alignment so if we um, right mouse click on the view and create alignment we want to do it by um, key points and we want to do it vertically so we can click on that one there and then that one there and that just aligns the two views so that they are now connected and um, if, if you see that we change that um, we can um, manage with that. We go back to our model view and hide the dimension layer. So right mouse click and go hide. That hides the dimensions. Coming back into here you can see that that reflects back onto this drawing. Um, we can also change maybe the scale, make it larger um, and yet as you see these two drawing views are actually connected. So then we could re-dimension it on here if we want, wanted to.